Hello everyone, welcome back to the Film Insight channel. In today's video, we're going to look back on some fan favorite moments on Hotel Hell. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get straight into the content guys. We're starting things off with Sherlock Holmes. In episode 6 of season 1, we were introduced to an entertainer who was also the owner of Roosevelt Inn. Named John Hoff, he would often host murder mystery events at the inn and would dress up as Sherlock Holmes. These murder mysteries never benefited the business in any way, so they were a huge waste of time and energy. Sadly, Hoff didn't realize that he was the one murdering his business. When Chef Ramsay tried to explain this to him, Hoff said, You're in the financially. We're in ruins, and if you put the same amount of effort into filling this place... Chef Ramsay tried to make Hoff think deeper about the situation, which resulted in him saying this. I just don't know what you want. It's only your own stupidity to why we're in the this far. Well, that is probably true. So then, man up. That's when things got pretty heated. Rather than accepting his faults, Hoff did this. Have a you're not night. 10 years old. You need to grow up and stop running away from the truth. Yeah. So much for being Sherlock Holmes. Up next is the mushroom. Let this be clear, we're not talking about the mushrooms you eat with your dinner. We're referring to magic mushrooms, or for short, shrooms. For those of you who don't know, magic mushrooms are substances that can be quite mind-altering. Though many might have taken shrooms recreationally, many have also used it for medicinal and spiritual purposes. Now, you might be wondering why we're talking about shrooms out of nowhere. Well, in episode 3 of season 2, we got to see an owner who was pretty much tripping on a consistent basis. Say hello to Richard Davis. Davis ran the hotel with his ex-wife and his two sons. But if we're being completely honest, it was mostly run by everyone but him. To make matters even worse, Davis's son Duke would often join in on the tripping as well. When was the last time you had a smoke? This morning. This morning. The pair always held hippie concerts at their restaurants every night. One time, Davis showed up dressed like this. What's wrong? I recognize the smell. <laughs> Chef Ramsay was sure in for a treat with this family. If this wasn't enough, Davis continued the insanity by doing this. Oh, come on. It's like trying to sleep above a nightclub. Right? So, who wants some magic mushrooms tonight? Up next is calling cops on staff. Anyone and everyone is entitled to get their paycheck after some hard work. But what if workers are denied this very basic transaction? It's insane and unacceptable, right? Well, in episode 6 of season 3, we came across an owner who did just that. Meet Verendar Carr. Carr never respected her staff and treated them like crap. Here's the ball. You want me to put it in? She's not a people person. She has no people skills. What? French onion on here, now. Her biggest issue was being a complete control freak. Before Chef Ramsay visited the hotel, he met with some of the business's old employees. One of the former employees made a shocking revelation. Check this out. Yeah, she'll cut you a check in six weeks when she feels like it. She wouldn't let you go pick up your paycheck. She so called the cops on you. Chef Ramsay learned more about the owner and the hotel's insanely high employee turnover. Stories like this sent a shiver down his spine. When Jeff Ramsey finally visited the hotel and confronted Carr, she denied all the allegations her former employees made. But Chef Ramsey knew better. He had enough proof which was further reinforced when a current worker said this. Why are you going through so many staff? I don't know. You don't know? I think I hire people and... Uh... Oh, so it's them. Not good enough for you. Yes. Indeed, she's not the kind of boss you want at your job. Coming up next, Not So Royal. In episode 8 of season 3, we saw a beautiful castle that was built and owned by Jim and Martha Landall. Chef Ramsay was impressed with Landall's Mohican castle, but the big question is, was he treated like royalty? Spoiler alert, nope, he wasn't. Instead, the famous chef felt the opposite. First, he saw this. And then he found this. The food should have tasted divine, but here's how that really went. The funniest part was that Jimmy, their chef, didn't even know how to cook a filet mignon. This is how he managed to cook one.
Chef Ramsay was joined by a couple who wanted to sample some of the food for their wedding and it wasn't really what they expected. The disappointed couple expressed their feelings and said, Not really the castle of your dreams, right? Let's move on to warning signs. In episode 5 of season 5, we got to see another crazy owner named Ken Pichota. He was the owner of River Rock Inn, an inn with historical roots. Considering that the inn is from the 1800s, it was pretty dated. While Chef Ramsay was impressed with the inn's backstory, his impression took a complete nosedive the moment he got to his room. First, he found this. Ugh, look at all those bugs. And the blue bottle is stained for the week. Ugh. There's like a little forest of them down here. Will you give these to your cleaner? Sorry. Ugh. Then he walked into the bathroom and saw this. Look at this here. I think that's a cockroach. Not really something you want to see on your holiday, right? With so many disgusting discoveries, Chef Ramsay found something ridiculous. If you use this drill, replace it, or I'll buy a new one with your paycheck. <laughs> Bloody hell, charming. Ken definitely has issues. Bloody hell. If you eat these cookies, take one to your next job interview. I mean, my god. So, who is putting up warning signs like this? It has to be Ken Pashioda. And what was the reason, you ask? This guy has major trust issues. Nope, that's not how business works, man. It'd be best to trust your staff if you want a successful business, my friend. On to the next one being let's get you a plus one. We have more to discuss in terms of Ken Pichota. If you didn't know, he had to sell his home to keep River Rock Inn afloat. During this time, he moved into the inn. It's safe to say that apart from being delusional, Pichota was also very lonely. He was 43 at the time and was very single. The only companion he had was his cat. Chef Ramsay realized that it was not just the inn that needed a makeover, but Pashota needed one too. Chef Ramsay decided to do this. I've flown in Barbie Hatch, a Hollywood stylist, to give him a new look. This one's a little bit too big for you. With that being done, the famous chef moved on to his next mission. Meeting the right companion can do wonders for your life, and Chef Ramsay believed in this strongly. Quite a lovely little place. Take a seat. <laughs> How dapper does Kenny look? Who knew Chef Ramsay could play Cupid too? Moving on to Sorry No Samples. In Season 3, Episode 5, we got to see two rude people named Brent and Afni who were the owners of Lakeview Hotel. The hotel also had an ice cream parlor with over 40 different flavors, but here's the catch. The owners don't give out any samples. The excuse Brent gave as to why he isn't giving out samples is pretty dumb. Listen to this. When we're really, really busy, we have a line that goes out the door. Yeah, and so I'm told and by if this, one person asks for uh, a sample, they will all ask for a sample. Doesn't make much sense, does it? How does he expect to run the business then? Brent and Afni were obviously not popular in the community as they treated everyone very poorly, including their staff. But hey, wait till you hear this. They had another absurd rule. The hotel only allowed adults because Brent didn't want to have to deal with children. According to him, children are just a nuisance. Here's what Chef Ramsay had to say to that. What a creep. Yeah. Just be quiet, will you please? You know, I don't know why people don't like to be here. What a creep. It's a hotel, Brent. It's supposed to be family friendly. And finally, the haunted hotel. Now, if you love the darker side of life, meaning demons and spirits, you probably wouldn't mind staying at a haunted hotel. Who knows, you might even meet a ghost. In episode 7 of season 2, Chef Ramsay visited the Curtis Hotel. The Curtis Hotel, run by the Hardesty family, was built in the 1700s. At the time of the taping of this episode, the hotel was run by the fourth generation, Chris Hardesty and his sister TJ. Chef Ramsay had no idea about the hotel being haunted until he heard this. I can't believe you're gonna be in room 16. Why? Because room 16 has a ghost in it. A haunted room. My goodness me. The room was totally disgusting. How was Betty staying there? The hotel's maintenance was so bad that Chef Ramsay got locked in his room. That's when he said, It must be the bloody ghost. Come on, Betty, let me out. 
I just want to get some lunch. In truth, we believe, ghost or not, the business was undoubtedly being haunted by Chris and TJ. They're terrible at managing the place. What do you think? Do you buy their ghost stories? With that, we've sadly come to the end of the video. Were any of these moments your favorite? Let us know in the comments section down below. Don't forget to give us a like and share. Also, hit the subscribe button to never miss out on our updates. Thanks for watching, guys.